Hello everyone, welcome to the latest edition of our video series. Here on our PC Benchmarks and Gaming channel, we're dedicated to providing you with top-notch insights on optimizing your PC's gaming performance. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for all our upcoming videos. Exciting news on the tech front, FSR 3 with frame generation is now officially supported in select games. This AMD technology can now be leveraged on a variety of GPUs, whether you're rocking an RX 580, GTX 1650, or RTX 3060. The beauty of it? You can now enhance your game's frame rate, achieving smoother and crisper visuals even at lower resolutions. In today's episode, we're delving into the latest games featuring FSR 3 implementation, namely Starfield and Remnant 2. The game-changing aspect? Frame generation is unleashed on any GPU, breaking free from the previous restrictions set by AMD. I'll be personally putting this to the test on my trusty GTX 1660 Ti, examining the results. Join me on this journey as we dive into the world of frame generation and witness the impact it has on gaming performance. Let's get started. Our inaugural test brings us to Remnant 2, where we're pushing the graphical settings to the lowest quality, maintaining a 1080p resolution, and abstaining from any upscaling methods. Regrettably, as we venture into more graphically demanding sections, the performance takes a notable dip. For a comprehensive examination of the game's performance, especially during its initial release, I encourage you to explore my detailed test video. It provides a thorough insight into how the game fared under various conditions and settings. I've switched the upscaler mode to FSR 3 and enabled frame generation. Let's evaluate the results and see how it turned out. The shift in frame rate is substantial, soaring from 40 FPS to an impressive 87. This notable improvement is particularly significant in the game Remnant 2. Let's thoroughly test and inspect for any potential errors or graphical glitches. Regrettably, the frame generation isn't flawless. There are some issues such as certain HUD elements flickering and a faint ghosting effect near our character. Now let's put the implementation of FSR 3 to the test in Starfield. Let's initiate the testing process for the game using FSR 3, initially without enabling frame generation, and assess its performance. I suggest checking out my earlier video, recorded prior to the official implementation of FSR 3. In that video I extensively tested the Luke FZ frame generation mod, and the performance results were notably impressive. Sam has told me so many stories about Aquila City. <laughs> I feel as though I've lived here all my life. Find someone we can trust, and maybe we will. Like who? Not you, not one of your rangers. The rock isn't exactly masked. But as seats of government go, it's still quite an impressive structure. I've been helping out my mom with doctor stuff. It's hard sometimes. Let's be certain to stock up on some extra ammunition before we explore the wilderness around the city.
Let's enable frame generation and evaluate the performance, thoroughly analyzing for any graphical errors or bugs. There has been a substantial increase in the frame rate as we've successfully reached 80 FPS. We've encountered a significant issue here. You may have noticed the highly unstable frame time. Now when pulling out the gun, a noticeable stutter and graphical bug have emerged. I suspect this could be attributed to my CPU, currently maxed out at 100% usage, possibly causing a bottleneck. If you've tested this with a more powerful You're CPU, please I'm share your experience in the comments. If you're encountering the same issues I demonstrated in the video, I recommend locking the frame rate at 60 FPS for a smoother and more stable experience. I have complete confidence in the Marshal. Yeah. 